G'day, g'day, g'day. Welcome back to TF Custom Shaving Brushes Workshop. How are we all? I see uh, Sam's been in and off for dinner and he'll be back later. I see uh, Grey Dog's in there. How are you, Grey Dog? Brett, how you doing, buddy? <coughs> I'll just then um, bring up the, uh, now that I'm live, I'll bring up the um, Facebook setup and we'll, um, we'll check out and see what's going on. Amber, how are you? Welcome back. Good to have the uh, the locals in there first up again. Gonna do a, um, as you probably seen by the title of the video, I'm gonna make myself a, um, I just bought some bore knox, uh, 26 mil and 28 mil. So I'm gonna make myself up a 28 mil bore. I've never, never actually used the bore yet and never actually well I've made a couple of bore um, handles for people that supplied their own bore knots um, but I've never actually um, I've never actually used one so I'm gonna give it a try and um, we'll see how we go so I've chosen a 28 mil I'm not actually sure about setting these either I don't know if you just set these in I mean imagine it would be sort of similar to like a badger but um, being that these are fairly, fairly strong as far as backbone's concerned, I'm guessing it will soften right up once they've had a few um, uses. From what I've seen, I think the, the bristles tend to split and soften up. Um, but as far as loft, I'm not sure what's an ideal loft. I mean, this is a 70 mil high knot, um, 28 mil base plug, glue plug. Um, so I'm thinking maybe setting it in about maybe 12, 12 mil, which will give it, um, what's that going to give it, 50, 58 of a loft. But I don't know if that's going to be too floppy once it softens up or if, um, if I need to set it in a little bit more. So Grey Dog, have you had, have you had any um, experience with bore knots, mate? <coughs> So let me, um... okay, I'm going to, um, I'll let you get chatting in there, um, if, Grey Dog, if you've got any uh, knowledge on bore knots, setting bore knots, mate, let me know in the in the chat and I'll, um, I'll come back to you. I'm just going to start cleaning up the end of this now, um, so we can get started. It's been relatively good there, but it's out a bit here, but I don't think I can get that any better. It's not much in it, so I think we'll be all right. Right, I'm just going to clean it up. And I do need to lift that tool rest up a bit. And I'll clean up the end. Just nice and gently. And I'll put these on to um, camera three there so you can see what's going on. So this was one of the blanks we cast some streams ago. We've done about three or four in the one uh, casting video. So um, I thought, I quite like it. It looks nice and refreshing. We've got a bit of, bit of a mix of color inside it too, I'm hoping. Um, so I think it'll look quite nice with the bow knot in it, being that it's a, a light color. So um, it'd be nice and refreshing, hopefully. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm familiar with um, I'm familiar with the breaking and all that of the uh, the board knots, but um, I'm just not 100% sure on um, on what loft it should be, being that it's a 70 mil high, um, like the knot is 70 mil high from base of the glue plug to the top of the bristles. Um, so if I make it, if I set it in about 12 mil, I don't want to compress it tight, but I'm thinking if I set it in about 12, 13 mil, so that'll still give me 50, 58 loft to 57 loft. But anyway, I'll, I'll keep going. So I'm liking the look of that on the top there. So I've got to drill this out now. So I've got a 28 mil um, fastener bit in there. But I'll probably have to maybe trim it out a little bit once I, um, once I set my depth. But anyway, we'll see how we go. So I'm going to slow that right down. Well, damn, but not well. Vodka lady or spiced rum. I used to drink a lot of vodka in my younger days, but I, I like my rum now. I like the dark rum. Right. So I'm going to set that on just on the blank there. And I'll do my usual again, I'll take a size from there to there. So that's about 16. So if I want um, 12 on that, that'll be 28. So I'll take that until we hit 28. I might even go 29. This quill on the tailstock's got an ejector. When you wind it back a certain point, it just releases the... Um, so when the, the, the quill on the tailstock is out, your, your bit locks in, your, your moss taper locks in, but it's got an ejector in it. So when you wind it back too far, it automatically ejects the uh, piece for you. But you've just got to make sure that the quill's out of it before you lock it in. You know? Right, now, let me have a look at that. Now, I don't think this will fit in that hole without the hole being opened up a bit. Um, but at the moment, I've got 30 mil, which is what I drilled. And I don't think this will fit in here yet. No, I'm not. So it's going to be opened up. Yeah, I'm thinking I'll be right there, mate. I'm thinking 57, 58 is going to be the is going to be the uh, optimum for it. I'm just not sure how soft the bristles go once they're actually broken in, and um, whether the bristles tend to go a little bit more floppy or whether they stay fairly, um, fairly, um, you know, with a good backbone. I'm not sure. I've, I've never used one, so I don't know how the bristles respond once they're wet. So I'm sort of guessing to this one at this point. Um, but anyway, I'll soldier on. And, um, that's how you learn how to set the mine. <coughs> Find out what works. Try it yourself. <coughs> right, so. I'm just going to turn this around and come in and open that hole up a little bit.
Yeah, that's what I was afraid of, right? Um, going deep. I don't. I mean, I've, I've read some people say that they do set their uh, the bores deep, but um, nah, I'm not into that at all. I think um, setting them deep uh, makes them ladder hogs as well, and then you don't get the flow through either. You lose the flow through if you set them too deep, um, and you make them too much backbone. They just get too. Um, too severe, so um, no, nah, I'm not a, I'm not in favour of setting knots deep at all, to be honest. So that was 28. I'm going to go in about there. We'll have a look at that. Still a little bit too tight, I think. So I'm going to open that hole up a little bit. Just a, just a fraction now. I don't want it to be too, um, too loose, but just a little bit more. That's better. Now that as it sits at the moment, it's still fairly high. Um, if that's right in. What have we got? We got that's 13 mil. Yeah, that's all the way home. So that's still sitting at round about 60 there, so I think I can go on a little bit more on that yet. Just a little bit. Um, what am I looking for? This. Not a lot though. Maybe just another mill or two. That's my thinking anyway. So we'll try that. Just bring this back in. Oh. Went against my, my um, stop bar. Okay, we'll try that one. And I'll just hit that with a little bit of Sandpaper, just take the sharp edge off. Try that again. Yeah, that feels better. Yeah, so that's about 57, 58 there now. So I think, and that feels quite nice. It doesn't feel like it's choked in the, uh, in the socket. Is the music a bit loud? Let me catch up here. Hey, 
Is it still loud or was it just that track, mate? Music's all good now. We're still a little bit loud. Let me turn it down a touch. We'll try a bit there. How's that? Maybe one up. Try that. We'll see how that goes, eh? Right, so I'm happy with that, I think, now. So um, now I've just got to decide what shape I'm going to do. And I'm going to keep this nice and simple, this one. Um, in fact, I was maybe even going to do a shape like the um, the recent um, PNC limited edition one that I done for them. Um, I might have a look at doing that for a change. Something simple, something. And I'll put my live centre in the tail stop now. I won't put it in just now though until I work out what I'm doing shape wise. So, I'm going to make this about, let's go to the longer size of 70. And I'm going to make this about, That'll look okay. So let's just go there and there. And yeah, I think that'll look all right. Okay, we've done. So and tool rest up a bit. My hands all back to normal, by the way. After three days of um, steroids, come good. So um, back to normal. Is on to um, and we'll go three. So I've only just scheduled this stream in, but I'm going to sit um, over the next day and uh, work out a plan of attack and what we're going to be doing for the next um, couple of weeks. If I can, if I can get that far out, I'd like to.
Okay. Actually, no. I'm going to I'm going to go with my uh, standard handle on this one. I think and I might do a little bit different at the bottom, just for something a little bit different. Fraser, how are you, buddy? later. Right, I just want to have a look and see how that's looking as far as when the knot's sitting in it. So I'll stop that for now and I'm going to sit the knot in there. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. I really am. Okay, that's good. That's good, good, good. I'm just going to clean up that edge before we go too far. nicely and I'm just going to round that top edge just a little bit there That should look quite nice. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay, done. We've done that part. Now we'll set up for the um, for the bottom. And I'm thinking, 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 I might just put a, a, um, a bottom marker in first, just so I can see where I'm heading. And I did set that longer, slightly longer, so that was on 70. And I'm thinking I'll keep it about there. up again. And we'll speed it up a bit. Still running a bit slow. That had to happen, didn't it?
Right. Now I've got my bottom mark. And I'm thinking, sorry I hit the mic there, um, I'm thinking I might do what I've done with that other handle and run a little bead around the bottom here. I quite like that shape. Um, Amber, I can't remember now, I'd have to watch, I'd have to go back and check the video to see what we mixed in this one, but there was quite a few colours in it, I think. Um, blues and greens and, um, yeah, but very, very, just very subtle, um, and there was a lot of, I think, pearly type in it, you know? So it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Um, so yeah, so I'm really just playing at the moment. And I didn't have any sort of set shape that I wanted to put into this handle. I've just sort of come here and there was nothing that sort of really took my fancy as to what I was going to turn or anything like that. It's going to be a little bit more of a chunky um, handle, this one, with the, with the bore in it. And like I said, I've not really used the bore, not before. So um, this is a first. Um, I like the light colour. It just looks nice and refreshing and I thought, well, it should go okay with the um, with the bow knot being a light colour. So I thought, let's try it. And I've got badgers and I've got synths, so I thought, well, I only got the delivery today of all the um, all the bow knots, so um, I thought I'd um, try one myself before I start making them for customers. If anybody wants, you know, a bow knot made. Should do that, I think. Now we'll do some um, shaping in the middle there. Uh, yeah, horse horse hair is quite nice. I've got a couple of horse hair knots. Um, I haven't actually tried, again, I haven't tried them. I've only ever done badgers and, or tried badgers and synths. Um, so, um, but they're a lot softer, I believe. And then you can get the mix of uh, horse hair and um, boar, can't you?
Okay, um, I think I'm getting there with the shape. I might um, have another look with this away. And we'll turn it off. And we'll sit the knot in there. Yeah, I'm quite liking that actually. Samuel, how are you, buddy? How was dinner? Yummy yum. T man, how you doing, buddy? Exfoliates the skin is what the term is, isn't it, grey dog? I'm quite happy with that shape though, I think that looks quite nice. Um, so I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go with that. So I think I'm ready to start sanding already. So, let's go. Probably a little bit too fast for sanding. Maybe we could do a similar shape to this one for your um, for your um, chameleon one, uh, T man. Although the um, the only thing will be with the uh, with that one is that being a thirty mil knot, oh, it might still work. But we we really need to try and leave a lot of material support in the knot in the thirty mil knot. This one's you know. It's thin, but it's still got enough meat to support it. But with the 30mm rhodiums, they've got so much swelling when they take on water because they're so dense. So it would need to have a thicker wall on this part here. So it might might not look right, but we can have a look when we, um, once we get the knot and we get it on the lathe to start turning and setting the knot, then we can have a look and see what we think. And this is a fairly, this is a fairly long handle. Um, well, when I say it's fairly long, I think it's probably going to end up my, roughly my standard size, which is about 68, or maybe slightly longer. It's probably about 69, this one. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, it's just, like I said, the rhodium, the, the big rhodiums, the 30 mil one, have to have a lot of, a lot of support in the top section of the knot, eh, the handle, I mean, um, because that knot swells up like you would not believe. And if there's not enough support there, it will split the handle. With enough support, no problems at all. Especially in resin. But it would definitely split a timber one apart, that's for sure. Did you all see the photographs that I put up of the one that we turned the other night? It turned out quite nice. Customer was happy with it. So um, no need to remake another one with a solid black top. He was happy with the, um, the black and the clay. So um, that one will be getting sent to Sarjan tomorrow. And I'll touch base with Sir Jan when I do that to find out more about your uh, how how he's going with these other knots, um, T man. No, the knot, the base of the knot swells up because the knots are so dense. They've got so much more hair in there. Um, so much more bristles. So what happens is when the, when the knot gets wet, it absorbs the amount of water, but because the knots are so dense, they take on so much more water. So what actually happens is, is when the bristles take on the water, they expand. And when they expand, they put pressure on the edge of the, uh, the outer edge of the handle. And that's what can cause the timber ones to split. So unless you've got lots of material around the top of the handle where the knot's set in, um, then you're, you're fine if you've got, you know, a nice thick wall. But if you don't have a thick wall, then you've got to either insert a steel ring in there or an aluminium ring to uh, restrain the, the swelling, which means that the knot chokes up in the bottom, in the base. Or you've got to have, a, a, like I said, a nice wide supporting rim around the top of the handle, around the knot. All knots do it, but it's just that because the rhodiums are so dense and such a large size, there's so much more bristle there to swell and take on water. And these are all things that you learn as a brush maker and, you know, you learn from experience, I guess. <sighs> we done a batch of handles for uh, Sir John some time ago, one of the first, ha one, first, some of the first handles I done for Sir John. And there was quite a number of them actually split. Now they were supposed to be stabilised wood and we did leave the walls relatively thick but it wasn't enough and a lot of those handles split. Um, then I done the same with, um, with razors because that was all around about the same time. Razors first initial one split as well. <sighs> but you know, we've si since found out that you know, with those types of blanks, because you're hybrid where you're casting resin on the ball, you're actually better setting the, uh, the knot in the resin part instead of in the timber with the big ones. The smaller ones, it's not so bad, but the big 30 mils, 29, you know, they're a bit, you gotta give enough room for them to, to expand and swell without putting unnecessary, unnecessary pressure on the, um, 
on the handle material. Synthetics dry very, very quickly. Um, badger, dense badger knots can take sometimes three, four days to actually um, dry out properly. Depending on your temperature and your climate, that sort of thing as well, obviously. Um, but to answer your question, Sam, yeah, sometimes it can take three to four days for a for a badger brush to properly dry out and obviously the denser that is again the more hair that's packed into that knot the longer it's going to take for it to dry out. So there's a lot of things to um, a lot of things to factor in. Okay, next one. Yeah, I think I explained that, Sam. With a metal ring or a, an aluminium ring. Um, you can get high carbon steel which doesn't rust, so um, you, can, you can do it that way. Um, or you can, if you can get an aluminium ring that's got the right internal diameter for the knot, you can set that into the, um, into the uh, top of the handle so that it gives the um, handle additional strength, but again, you just got to remember that these are not sort of standard things that we keep as brush makers. So it means you've got to go out sourcing that type of stuff. And then a lot of the time, um, you know, you can't find the right diameters. So um, a lot of the time we would advise that the walls, the handle's got to be made thicker. It's got to have a, a, a thicker, um, a thicker diameter around supporting the knot. But if it's in resin, it's not an issue. Like I said, it's really only if it's timber or a hybrid um, because it can separate the grain, cause the grain just to separate apart if it's too, um, if it's not got enough support and if it is a large or not. So, yeah, lots of things to uh, think about. People see you making a handle and you know, there's a lot to setting, as, as Grey Dog would know and can explain to you, there's a lot to setting a knot. You can set the knot too deep, you can set it too tight, you can set it too loose, um, just by the, the, the size that you make in the top of the handle. And all brushes, as, as Grey Dog mentioned earlier, all knots are different um, because they're packed differently Sometimes they're different sizes. Some of them have glue bumps in the top of the knot and others don't. Um, they just have the glue plug and, and it's, you know, nice after that. So there's all these different variables come into play when you're setting a knot. You know, the height, the loft, the height of the loft, the free loft.
whether it's for bowl lathering, face lathering, they can all make differences to making sure that you get the right knot, the right handle, the right knot, the right feel. A lot of people don't go into that amount of detail though. You know, they're just happy to get a nice handle and a nice knot and as long as it's set in the ballpark where it should be, then they're normally happy. <sighs> but some people will specify what the, exactly what they want because they know the knot or they know what they like as far as feel. So, um, Right, next one. And this will be my first handle shaving brush that I've made myself with one of my new medallion, well, with my medallion in the bottom. Woohoo! Because all my other brushes, I haven't, I haven't made myself a brush in a long time. I'm still going to make myself a rhodium as well, at some stage. Um, but because I just got these new bores and I haven't tried one, I thought, yep, I'm up for one of them. Plus it lets me know how it feels when I've set it at this particular loft. So if somebody says to me, oh well look I want a bore but I don't want it to be this or I don't want it to be that, then I get a better picture as to um, what I need to do if I set them a bore knot. Unless they know what they want, you know. Yeah, I've made a few shapes, um, you know, like all variations on these same shapes. And, and, and like I said, it's been commented before that they look like a pawn or one look like a pawn and one looks like a rook. And um, it has been mentioned before, but they're all different. All the shapes have all got their own little subtle differences, even although people refer to them as like a rook or a pawn, you know, like. Um, but it's just that shape obviously pops into people's head or that particular shape. And they're all different, you know. And that's what I'm saying, it doesn't take much. You just take a little bit of material off in the wrong place and you can make a handle look totally wrong. Um, or leave too much on in a particular spot and it'll look wrong, you know. It's amazing how just a very, very small minor change can totally change that the look of the handle. I think this um, this blank's going to look quite nice. Um, it's not going to be an eye popping bright colour thing in your face. Um, which I don't mind actually, um, but I think it's going to be pleasant. And like I said, my words that I chose were refreshing. Refreshing sort of a colour. And we're coming into summer, so it'll be nice. Right, that'll do that one. Next one. And even although this has got a bit of detail in it, it's not too hard to actually sand it. Um, 
just because of the way the uh, details are shaped. Still don't think you're getting the colour properly in the in the camera. There's too much lights, but um, there's not a lot I can do about that, unfortunately. We need the light, otherwise the pictures will go too dark. And <sighs> Ryan, how are you, mate? Ryan's doing all his um, training. He's in about eight, eight weeks of training for uh, the Navy at the moment. So he's um, working away on that. Playing around with the landing crafts. In Sydney Harbour. And thereabouts. Now, who can measure me, give me the measurements for a puck? I think we talked about this um, several streams back that I was going to try and maybe do a little um, wooden tub for a puck on the lithe. <sighs> and um, I don't have any pucks, unfortunately, so um, I can't get the size. If somebody can give me the size, the ideal size, the internal size for a puck, for the box and we might have a look at making a well a little bowl I suppose but we'll make a lid for it so if somebody can give me the size of a standard puck soap puck that would be great but you'd have to put it in the comments of the video so that I can um, get it later so the comments down below the video once the video goes up on YouTube or message me with it or email me with it one of the two I'd imagine they'd all be pretty much the same size so I don't think if it doesn't really matter then if I just get a rough size of what I soap puck bowl needs to be if anybody's got one and then I'll um, that'll give me enough to work out what I need to actually turn one on the lathe because that would be another stream that I would like to do at some stage Yeah, I just need to be sure that I get the right size amber because, like I said, I've, I haven't ever had any pucks, so I'm not sure. I've always just bought containers of soap, so... Um I need to be sure so that I don't go making something and it's the wrong size, you know.
So nobody's got a puck, eh? Or razor's got a bowl. You, like a puck, a, a bowl for putting um, soap in razor. That would do if that's, if that's what it's for. That would be good. That would do the job, probably. And it's probably about that time, eh? Um, let me see. We'll thank our patrons first. And everybody else in the stream, I guess. But these guys get a mention. So, uh, once again, thanks, Brett, Razor, Sam, T-Man. Thanks for your support, guys. Much appreciated. I'm going to be up for a fair bit of consumables, actually, very shortly. I'm going to need more sandpaper. I'm going to need more um, CA glue and activator. And I think the activator is about 30, uh, 32 dollars $33 a can here for the um, NCF activator. It doesn't go long, it doesn't go far. It does when you're using doing pens because they're only small and you don't use a lot, but when you're doing bigger items, it's amazing how quickly it disappears on you. Just fold that up a bit, try and get in the, the little groove there. Right, I think we're done with the uh, dry sand, so um, we might go to the wet. Um, here's your moment to shine, Razor. Pop, pop, pop. Right, um, get the uh, get the ball up. See what speed we're going. Probably need to slow it down a bit. Probably about there's okay. I think I'll be up for replacing these pads again shortly, even although they're not that old. It's really frustrating and annoying. I think I've got another one or two sets there that I bought at the same time. So I'll work through them and then I'll have to speak to them, I think. Well, I'll speak to them. Yeah, I'll speak to them when I, when I need them, I guess. Um, let me get the chat back up. So thanks guys, thanks for your support and everybody else, it's much appreciated.
think so. Yeah, just it's hard for me to keep track on everything. So if um, if you're sending me anything, just send it via. Well, actually, you can send it through the patrons page via the private message on the patrons page, or um, or any way you like. One of my contacts. There's plenty there. Email. Messenger. In the comments below the video. They're all good. Yeah, these pads are just about harder, I think. It's a shame, really, because the pads are still cutting well. Every time I use them, they just get worse and worse and worse. And yet, I used to use these for pens all the time, and they'd, they'd last forever, you know? And you throw them away when the pads would stop cutting. Not when they start falling apart, not long after you've started using them. Oh, look at that, there's a little bit of green coming through in that brick. A greeny blue. White, sort of pearly white. You can even see some colours in it. I can't. I I'll need. I need to go back to the video and see um, see what we actually put in this one. It was in one of the casting videos. It's definitely got like mica white in it, or or pearl white, something like that of that nature. Um, but I can't remember if I used some of those. Um, Oh, what do they call them again? See, I forgot this last time as well. I always forget that word. I think I told you to remember me the next time. I forgot it. <laughs> For those that were paying attention. Yeah, well, you're either turning too fast or you're holding the pad in the one spot too long, Amber. You shouldn't, do, you shouldn't be able to burn holes in them. So try slowing your lathe down and keep the pad moving. Don't have it in one spot too long because you shouldn't burn them out. But like I said, there's different pa microfiber, um, Microsoft pads as well. So you've got to make sure you're getting the good ones because there is um, a lot of Chinese ones on the market and they're just absolute rubbish. They don't, they don't last long at all. They seem to last longer than these ones, mind you, but they don't cut as well either. The MicroMesh pads, Microsoft Touch MicroMesh pads are the proper branded ones. You pay a little bit more for them, they're supposed to last longer, but these ones are not. And I've never had this problem with them before. In all the years I've used them. Interference, that's it, the interference colours. I think I might have used a couple of the interference colours in this. I just can't remember though. I'd have, like I said, I'd have to check the um, video. So Amber was listening, see?
Yeah, it's a bit like uh, Jade, Sam. You, you're, you're on the money there, I guess. It's probably not quite as dark as Jade, though. Um, Jade probably looks a little bit darker than this. This one's still quite light. But it's, yeah, it's along those sort of lines. So we've got a, a Jade Rook handle, shaving brush. So should we call this one the Rook, should we? This kind of shape, should we call this shape the Rook? What's happened to the music? <sighs> Music's gone. Let me get the music back. I don't know what's happened there. I'll go back the other way. We'll take it from there. Uh, sorry, no, we go into there. And we go down to there. And we'll go click on that one. Click on that one. And we shall go play with windows. Yeah, I've seen them, um, seen a few people make chess sets. I am um, born up my unusual, are you? I've never had a born up. Harrell, how are you, buddy? Welcome back. We're almost there with the uh, with the wet. Just going through the last few grits, and then we'll be turning it around, parting it off, tidy up the bottom, set a coin in it, and then we'll set the uh, bore knot in it, 28 mil bore. 
This is going to be my first bore. You gotta try these things, eh? I mean, I don't mind a little bit of scrub and scritch. Um, I don't mind it. But I think you gotta try all. I mean, I've tried plenty since. I've tried plenty badges. Good quality ones, lesser quality ones. Um, and I thought, well, I've never tried a bore. So this one's going to be my bore, my first bore brush, and I'm looking forward to it actually. So I won't be shaving until probably Tuesday or Wednesday, some stage, probably Wednesday, because I'll, I'll be going to SES again. Um, so I like to have a shave before I go to SES, so I'll probably get a bit of growth on and then we'll... Um, Smash my face with this thing. Um, I'm going to put the um, the antique silver in this one, mate. I think. Um, I don't think the brass would bother. I don't think the antique brass would look as nice in it. So yeah, the antique silver will go in this one. So badger, what it all oh, badger boar mix, yeah, not badger, not boar, uh, horse, badger boar, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, look, I've, I've seen a lot of people say that, um, you know, the the boars that are, are beautiful, not once they're well broken in, because the, um, you know, the bristles tend to split on the ends and then they soften up a lot, and, you know, become really good. But um, like I said, I've never experienced it, so this will be my first experience, so... Um, maybe in a few weeks' time I can touch base and say what I think. But I do have a few of these knots in stock now, in a 26 and a 28. So, um, see how they go. And at least now, once I set this loft, and at least now I'll know from the feel that I get with this one as to, you know, if I'm on the money or if I need to change it a little bit. So, um, all good. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it, using it, giving it a whirl. Is there any um, is there any quicker way to break in the um, the bow knots, or are you better just letting them take the time breaking when they want to break in? This one's looking nice actually, I'm, I'm really liking the um, the colour in this. It's very, like I said, very refreshing, nice and light, so it'll go well with the uh, the bore. But I'm liking just the um, subtle pattern in it and the colour mix, sort of greeny blue, probably more green than blue, but it's a greeny blue and then there's a bit of white in there sort of pearl white 
and a couple of little touches of colour, so I'm wondering, I'm not sure if that's maybe some of the interference colour coming out. I can't remember what interference colours we put in it. I can't even remember how many colours we put in it, to be honest. Um, it's been sitting there for a few weeks now. So I'd need to try and find the video that we, um, the casting video that we'd done when we um, poured this one. Yeah, I think that's the way I'll go. I think I'll just uh, let it take its time and let it break in when it's ready to break in, I guess. Like I said, I don't mind a bit of scritch and scratch anyway. Um, so, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes, I I haven't choked the knot into the handle. I've gave it a bit of room, so um, not a lot of room, but I've gave it a little bit because I didn't want to choke it. I haven't set it too deep. I've left the loft quite well, reasonably high. Um, so I'm hoping that, that um, that'll be enough. I have set a couple, but in other people's handles, and I've re knotted a couple of handles for other people where they've wanted bow knots put in them, but um, they've told me what they wanted, so um, I didn't have to sort of worry about setting the loft or anything in it. They knew what they wanted, so um, that's what I done. So this, I'm hoping I've got this one right. But I think so, I think it's, it's typically the same as badgers. You've just got to, you know, get the feel for each knot and then um, and know where it needs to be, you know? And I think I'm reasonably comfortable with that. Okay, get rid of that and that for now. And I'll grab another paper towel. We'll just dry this off a bit. Yeah, but what do we call it? Uh, who said the Jade Rook? T-Man. But what do we call it T-Man if I use that shape and we, we do it on a different handle? So it's really the handle name. Forgetting about the colour. Yeah, there's not a lot of colour in it, to be honest. There's, it's a it's a greeny blue with probably darker touches of green, and a lot of pearl in it as well and it's kind of swirled in in different areas, so it's quite nice. Anyway, let's get it off there now, because we're done there. We can turn it around, change the chuck over, so I'll put you back to that one so you can see my pretty smiling little face. And we'll get rid of this chuck. Um, yep, that's it. Put it over here with the other ones. We'll grab this one. <sighs> That's what it looks like so far. Oh, it's blown out with the lights. Uh, maybe if I get it in. Yeah, that one's going to show it better. Let me go to camera three. If I get camera three to zoom in on it, you'll see it better when it gets polished. Once it gets a shine on it. But you'll see I've left a little bit of room in there for the knot without choking the knot. And I've only set it in about, oh, it goes up to about there. So I've set it in. It's probably set in about 15 mil, which is not a lot.
Yeah, Han's a good tea man. Come good, uh, come good, mate. Three days of steroids fixes it up. Yeah, I'm liking that. Anyway, let's get back to business, eh? Oh, wrong key. for tension otherwise we'll explode it drop this right down bring it in closer <sighs> bring in the tailstock for a bit of support So we'll just part this off now. Um, let me just adjust my high grinder here. A CBM wheel. So I'll swap this to uh, camera four for a sec. I'm just going to put this on the CBN and just sharpen up my uh, parting tool. So it's uh, kind of hard to um, kind of hard to let you see what's happening, but I'll try my best. That's all we need for the CBN, and I'm probably a little bit low. Probably still a little bit low. That's better. And I'll take these back to. Um, Take us to that one for a shot change and then we'll go picture and picture on this one. We'll go picture and picture cam three. You can see from both views. back in and up and get the right height for the tool too high that's better just give that a little clean up we'll come back to that now we'll put the Jacobs chuck in with the um, 
25 mil first of it. And we'll just drill this out for the medallion in the bottom. And we'll slow it down. They don't like to cut fast. And this one's pretty blunt anyway now. I need to probably replace it. And that'll do me for that. And now we'll just clean up the edge a little bit. Uh, spindle gouge. And I just want to nice and gently around there. Have another look at that, make sure we're still deep enough for the coin. Yep. Oh, now I'm not going to get that out, am I? Oh, there we go. So that's good. Now we're just going to give that a little bit of a sand up now. Um... chat back up again, I lost the chat there. You must be getting a bit of a collection of green brushes now, Brett.
nice. Right back on the wets, just to finish off the bottom. So just a quick tickle. Why is that? Oh, that's okay. Cool, that's good. Soft drink, yeah, soft drink here in Australia, mate. We used to call it juice in uh, Scotland. Juice just was any sort of fizzy or fresh drink. Just juice. Yeah, Coke's Coke. You can only get one Coke out. Eh? Well, there's loads of different flavours now, but Coke's Coke. Still like Coca-Cola. Not too many of them though. I used to drink a lot of them when I was younger on building sites and stuff. Good God.
drink it with a bottle. Especially here in Oz when it was in the summer and you were up, up on a roof, a white roof that reflected back at you. You copped the heat. I used to drink gallons of the stuff. It's probably why I'm paying for it now. All right, we are done. And I must say, I'm quite impressed with this little handle. Um, so I'm just going to hit that with the uh, cloth just to take the water off again. Right, that can go in the bin, mist. I'm going to take this off. And now he's going to see it pop because we are going to get some serious shine on this. I reckon. So let me go to the buffer. I'll just put it on to um, cam four. You won't, probably won't see too much, but um, but anyway, I'm going to take it to the buffer and uh, give it a good buff up. Put it in my pocket so I don't drop it until I'm ready for it. Surprisingly enough, it has got a bit of colour in it. A little bit here and there. Different ways the light catches it. I think it's going to be another one of these ones though where you're not going to see it properly in the camera with a light. But Jesus, I'll tell you what, it's nice. I'm real happy with it. Real happy.
All right, I'll go to this one and we'll put a little bit of uh, the luster buff on it. I've made myself one damn fine shaving brush here. I'm really happy with this handle. It's absolutely stunning. We'll get a bit of polish on it and then we'll set the coin and set the knot and then you'll get to see it. Hopefully the camera will pick it up but if not I'll do my obligatory three or four photographs and a little 30 second video after anyway. Um, but yeah, this is um, this has turned out really nice. I'm very pleased with this one. So not too tight, just enough to hold it there. That'll do it. Get a fresh piece of uh, paper towel. I'll go and grab the um, Plastex and the epoxy while I'm there because we will need that as well. And we'll need my trusty old glue board, which is here. Our glue there. Our mixing stick. Our coin. And our knot. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, we'll get a little bit of 
plastics on here. So we'll give it a good shake up. How are we all going in there all right? Good stuff. I hate that. I must have a, a long hair or a loose hair in my nose or something. It's bloody annoying. I'll have to chop that out later. Okay, nice and slowly to start with. Just let the polish work its way in and do its thing. missed anything in here. It's all good. We've got a dry bit, we'll speed it up a bit now and just buff it in. And we should get a real nice luster. I'm finding this, these new um, buffing bars are working much better for me than what the blue one is. I don't know if you've noticed I'm not using the blue one now, I'm using a, a brown one which is this one. If anybody wants the details of it, I can find the details of it. Um, I'll have a copy of the receipt somewhere. Um, but it seems to work really well. Just let me cut to that camera so you'll see it. So that's, I'm finding that's buffing any finer scratches out much better than what the blue one is. And it tends to stay on the wheel better. The blue one tends to just flick off the, um, the wheel. So that's the one I'm using for the buff. And then I'm using this one, Fabuluster, for a high, high luster finish. So I'm using that on the finishing wheel, and um, it just puts a real nice shine on the acrylic, and no scratches left whatsoever. It's really good. I was having a problem there for a little while with some scratches, um, and I had to work harder in my sanding. Um, but now, with these buffs, I can I still pay particular attention to my sanding, but um, I'm finding with these buffing bars now, um, I'm just getting such a better, higher quality finish on my um, on my resin brushes now. So it's amazing the difference the right stuff makes. All right, I think that'll be enough shine. Oh, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay, we'll take that off the chuck now and we'll get rid of that chuck because we are done with that. Get rid of the key. Put this chuck over beside the other ones. Over here. Here we go. And um, we'll mix up a little bit of glue. Sit the knot out the way, so part A first. I 
I'm going to do up a little bit more this time because I think I might be able to get the coin in and get the knot in at the same time. Um, before I add part B, I'll just give that base of that knot a little scrub up. With a bit of coarse grit. Just so we get a better bond to the glue plug. You've probably seen me do this in every knot anyway. It's very seldom I, I don't do it. Right, we'll put part B in. And that gets the epoxy done and out the way with the um, Okay, let's set the coin in. What I'll do is I'll change the um, picture in picture to um, cam one and I will change the camera to camera three and we'll zoom that out so you can see what's going on there hopefully so there we go that's better so I'm just going to push a little bit glue out to the edge for the coin We'll get a little bit of spill, but that's all right. We can um, wipe that out with a bit of methylated spirits later. Okay, set the coin in. Yeah, we're getting a bit of spill, so that's all right. Get a clean towel. And a bit of methylated spirits. Put that over here. And I'm just gonna work that in there to get that out. We've got a fair bit of ooze out actually. Starting to set in there now, so that's all right. Turn it inside out, we'll give it just another little bit of a wipe out. And then we'll set the knot, and then we can come back and give it another final. Okay, so we'll set the knot in now. So this is a um, five minute epoxy that I'm using. So it gives me just enough time to be able to do the two before it starts to glug up on me. Oh, 
Probably a little bit too much in there. That's fine. And we'll put a little bit on the bottom of the knot. Just a nice thin layer. That's set. I'm really, really liking this one, guys. I'm really pleased with this. Right, I'm just going to get a little bit more um, methylated spirits. I'll change the um, cloth around a little bit, get another spot, I'm just going to make sure that we haven't missed anything around the bottom because the coin should be starting to set now which it is. So there we go. All done and dusted. Um, I'll just put the lid and everything back on this um, put the lid back on this um, methylated spirits because I think we're done with that now put that over there for now and that can go in the bin now, how are we going in the uh, in the chat here? Everybody's happy. Have I got any questions that I've missed or haven't answered? Uh, Queensland doesn't have daylight saving, guys. We missed any questions? No? Nope. We're all good? Everybody's happy? You ready for the brush reveal? Aye? We're ready for the reveal? Well... Like I said, I am very pleased with it. It's turned out um, probably better than I anticipated, to be honest. Um, and like I said, it will be my first bore. So um, I will report back on what my thoughts are over, uh, over several shaves. It will probably take a fair few shaves though, I'd say, with, this, um, with the bore. I think they do say that it takes quite a number of shaves before the um, bristles start to split and soften up. Might get a clean cloth and just give that another little rub with a bit of fresh methylated spirits. Still a little bit of residue. And I can't have that on one of my brushes. Thanks Razor, I'll have a look at that later buddy um, and we'll get that earmarked in for a, um, for a stream I think. It might need to be done in two parts because I think it might be too much for one part doing the bowl and the lid. Um, especially if we get fancy with it. 
and I'll need to source out a piece of a suitable piece of timber. Um, and that'll be nice. Okay. They're not setting nicely. It feels good in that socket actually. I'm like I said, I'm fairly pleased with what I've set it to, so um, yeah. I've probably said that a few times now, haven't I? Right, so let me get this in shot. So you can see it in there, but the lights are blowing the colour out, so you're not going to see it properly in that camera shot. Um, you may see it if I go to camera two a little bit better but it's still blowing out I think because the lights are fairly strong we might stand a better chance in camera three I think camera three is going to be the one to show it but I still don't think you're going to get to see all the color in it. oh you're seeing a bit of color there I guess in the top section there you can see a little bit of violet blue And again there, it's difficult with the lights, but you hopefully will see it better in the photo tent when I put the um, when I do the little 30 second video. And then we've got the bottom there, nice and shiny and slightly recessed. So that'll be my first TF custom shaving brush with a bow knot, and also my first. TF Custom Shaving Brushes handle with the uh, medallion in it, believe it or not. So there you go. Looking pretty, pretty good. Can you see the colour in it? Sometimes it shows better on the actual video footage um, that you guys are seeing than what I see in my in my monitor here just with all the lights but when it goes on YouTube it sometimes darkens down a little bit compared to what I see so I'm not sure if you're seeing the colour there but anyway you'll see it in the uh, photographs that I put up in a little while guys so um, once again that's us with another brush one of the brush for me um, the next one I'll do for myself will be a rhodium uh, and I can put that with my Bob Quinn um, razor, Elite Razor uh, knot that, I, that I, I really like using. That was uh, two PNC limited edition brushes ago. Um, so yeah, so that's us done guys. Um, again, thank you very much for, uh, for all dropping in as usual. The usual crew, it's good to see you all getting in there and having a good chat and talking shaving and talking music. and just chilling and relaxing and watching the stream and listening to a bit of, bit of music through the stream as well. So it's all good. Um, so I'm done. I am all done. And like I said, I'm gonna try and get the time. I've just been kind of busy of light. Um, I've had a few, things, a few other things on and I've got a few other things coming up shortly. So um, I've just been kind of busy trying to get the time to sit down for a day and schedule in a heap of streams because um, you've got to take the photographs you've got to plan the projects out you've got to try and get photographs that are suitable to put up on youtube for the stream um, then you've got to put all the descriptions in and the, the details and the names and the dates and you've got to schedule it into youtube it takes a bit of time so um but anyway um we'll see what we can do if i don't get it done over the next day or two it will be done probably before next Tuesday because I get that longer break between um, the stream on Saturday morning through to the stream on Tuesday night so that lets me hopefully that'll let me catch up on a few bits and pieces and we'll um, we'll take it from there but anyway I'm going to close the shed door down and um, be sure to check out the photographs and the little video that I put up on TF Custom Shaving Brushes um, Facebook page and also on the Instagram page and um, you'll see how this how this looks and I'm hoping that it will show up a lot better in that little video and the photographs in the light tent rather as um, what you're seeing on here. So until then, you guys all take care, stay safe 
Don't do nothing I wouldn't do, okay? And we'll see you on Saturday morning, bright and early at 9 o'clock in the morning, Saturday morning, Australian Eastern Standard Time. So until then, take care, and we'll see you all later, right? Eh? Thanks, guys. See us.